Welcome to this watercolor tutorial for beginners on how to paint a realistic rose. An outline drawing is done which is available for download as well as the reference. Now with an elastic eraser I am removing the excess amount of graphite off the paper. It is important so it is clean and nice. Now to color mixing. Adding water to my color palette. Starting with Sennelier Red. Um, the second mix is Permanent Rose. Adding lemon yellow on a separate section, we will need lemon yellow there as well. Then manganese violet, and perlin violet, a little bit more for darker areas, more saturated contrasts. And I'm using clean clear opera rose for those very pink areas. Now we need to start painting with the clean water. Be sure that your water after mixing watercolors is new and clean so you have those first washes. Uh, water is transparent on paper. It's not mixed with some colors from the mixing process. And applying one petal at a time with just enough water for the watercolors to be moved where we need them and starting with permanent rose. In this permanent rose mix I also have a little bit of Sennelier Red and I will be adding some more pigments as I go because the more I started to look in reference the more I started to notice some other pigments there as well. I will be using also Red Violet from Magello for more saturated and contrasty areas and as I started painting first petal I'm really looking in the reference which you can also open in a gadget right beside you or right beside the tutorial and really zoom in each petal so you can see that in each petal there are lighter areas, darker areas, half tones and you really need to put those tonal values in places just in the first layer. It's very important. Also important to leave uh, light areas wider as they appear in the reference because as we go, as we will add more layers, we will be smoothing, uh, those areas will become smaller. If we will from the very beginning leave light areas as they appear in reference, then we will end up with no light areas at all. So it's important to keep, to keep those lighter parts wider, bigger. Uh, it's better for watercolor painting to have more light. It will be more fluffier, lighter in, ter in all, the, all terms of lightness. So it's important to not overpaint lightest areas. If we will overpaint, the painting ends looking flat and it's very common problem when I receive messages from my students and they're saying something is wrong, it's looking flat, it's not like yours and I can see that they're just over painted the light area. It's very dark, saturated and no light. So this is very important especially in the first layer to keep those light areas wider, bigger, more more greater than there in reference. While the surface is wet I'm adding a little bit more saturated and darker watercolor layer to the shadow areas of that individual petal. Now I'm speeding up the video to show you the process of painting this rose. Full video and tutorial is on my Patreon in real time with all the explanations from the beginning till the finishing touches.
I'm at the finishing stage of painting this rose and adding some final details. As I mentioned, you can paint along. This is really a stage where you can paint further and go into more detailing, go into more saturated and contrast look. Or as I will, I will stop here because I like how this rose looks already. And this was an amazing practice for keeping white areas light on how to make smooth transitions with wet on wet and hope you also learned something new and enjoyed the painting of this beautiful rose now is summertime and i'm all into painting roses they are so beautiful and so many varieties i hope you enjoyed it and are looking for other rose tutorials that will soon will be posted Thank you for watching and seeing my next tutorials. Bye bye!